Welcome to Abscission, an interesting looking point and click game, but that's, it's, it's not just that simple. Abscission is a Lovecraftian, everyone loves Lovecraft, story driven horror point and click investigation game. It involves searching crime scenes for evidence like, the only thing I will complain prematurely, at least for this game, but I'm just saying in general, crime scene investigation. I, I, that that genre is extremely boring to me. Uh, combining clues and questioning sus suspects, puzzles can have multiple solutions as you guide the protagonist, Detective Will Stanhope, through the story. Uh, Stanhope will sometimes be presented with alternative ways to handle a conversation based on four temperaments. Melancholic, uh, phlegmatic, sanguine, and or choleric. Uh, what at least separated made me be like, well, even if it's investigative base, which I find boring, is the screenshots did not look boring. They looked very well made. So, let's get into it. The screenshots gave it the presentation and visual style that I thought pushed it to make me interested in it. Ashford, MA. A town like any other. Stanhope, you there, I need you. It was direct reflection of humanity that clustered within it, its flaws and its virtues whilst also presenting as a microcosm of the human body. It had the capacity for a healthy growth, but when it was infected, it could burst. Strangely blurry font. Perhaps it's... Hmm. See how the game's doing that? Or it's because it's the way I have the game in windowed mode, not sure. Could be natural. But 1991. Good days. 10.7pm. Stan Hope will sometimes be presented, yeah, with ways... Da -da -da. There is no one approach that works best for all conversations, and Stan Hope will need to use all of them in order to be the best he can be. The game adopts or adapts to your choice with people who remember how Stanhope spoke to them and may respond differently in the future, so consider each response carefully. Will Stanhope's destiny... Will Stanhope's destiny is in your hands. Cool. No one is using this elevator tonight. You'll have to take the stairs. Why? I'm sorry, ma'am. As I said before, I can't tell you that. But it's our building. That's the way it is. Can we go? Do you want to take the stairs? It's fucking fat and lazy. This cop says we can't use the elevator. Wah, 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 wah. Nah, it's, why, is he like literally drooling? What about Mrs. Takamara? You want her to walk up three flights on that hip? Uh, I'm sorry, but the elevator can't be used. I don't know how many other ways I can say it. Then we'll go to a damn bar instead. Okay, I'll do it. Sorry, ma'am, you need to stay for a moment. We may need to ask you some more questions. I don't... Jesus, these people are so whiny. Officer Bruce, would you look at that? Will stand up. What the hell are you doing here? This ain't a vice case. Hey, Hogan, is this a is this vice case? I'm busy, Bruce. Well, it ain't. Oh. Uh... Fuck, let me remind myself what each means. So melancholic is detail-oriented, phlegmatic is calm, sanguine is sociable, choleric is driven. So I'll do sanguine if it's supposed to be sociable. I know as much as you, Luna called me in. Really? Yeah, ten minutes ago, where is her partner? I thought probably Lewis is out of town. So you letting me pass. Top floor. The only way up there is the elevator. The top floor is unlocked unless you fancy the fire escape. Oh, I knew this bitch was going to complain about it. Lady, I swear to God. So I'm going to have to probably keep referencing um, each of the four. Detail-oriented, calm, sociable, and driven. I could also just fucking move this thing on my left side. Actually, no, I can't do that. I need to get a new monitor, I swear to God. Anyways, um, let's see if I can actually squeeze it some other way. Okay, now I have, I'm, since I'm playing in a window, then I just have it on my main monitor, but it's squeezed to the left side, so now I don't have to minimize every time I want to look at it. Hungry looking man. Is that a, seriously a puddle of fucking saliva? 
Are you serious? Okay, so let's see. The man was in his mid-twenties. His eyes were concentrated on the ice cream in his hand as he tried to finish it before it melted. Okay, it's, hopefully it's the ice cream on the floor, not his saliva. Officer Steve Bruce was six foot five and mu of muscle and bad attitude. We'd had several run-ins over the years, but he was a reliable cop for the most part. I'd known Officer Lewis Hogan for around eight years. He'd always seemed generally efficient, though a little too reactive in his approach to make detective. Perhaps he was happy with his role and didn't wish to progress any further. Can't talk. Oh, can talk to Hogan. Officer Hogan, good to see you, Stanhope. I'm just taking some details from the landlord. I'll be done soon. I think Luna's waiting for you upstairs. I'll check in with her first. Will you still be here? Yeah, we won't be done here for a long time yet. You'll understand when you see it. He was deep in conversation with Hogan. I decided it would be better to speak to him later, with less people around. Elderly lady. I could just, like, grab her and lift her up the stairs if I was strong enough and maybe kind enough. Oh, wait. Behind the dude. I thought these are, like, fucking lockers or something. The elevator's right here. Alright. Huh. An elevator that leads straight to someone's room or straight where does it where does this go? Huh. It's a lot of blood. There was a considerable amount of blood staining the cloth that covered the floor. Judging from the color and viscosity, it was still relatively fresh. Just walk over it. There were pots of there were pots of paints, brushes, and a palette on the table. Green paint had spilled and dripped onto the floor, staining the planks. A half completed canvas has fallen on the floor. The image seems to be a forest, though underwater, a curious image. Let's get up all the details of this area. There was a leather jacket lying on the couch. I assumed it was fashionable, but really I had no idea. There appeared to be something in one of the pockets. I found a small black book filled with an address with addresses and phone numbers. I decided it could be useful. A slim pocketbook containing names and phone numbers. Uh, I guess we'll just have it in our inventory for another time. Uh, save? Oh, nice. Nice. This is just a demo, though, so who knows how long it is. The bookcase held an interest, an interesting collection, though not in any kind of order by genre or author. Most of the books were of the work of artists using very different techniques. Warhol sat next to Vallejo. Vallejo? Blah. Vallejo? Vallejo. For example, but there were some classics mixed in, such as The Rights of Man by Thomas Paine, and philosophical works from Wolf and... and Craven. Was it Craven or Craven? Definitely references to John Wolf and uh, Mr... God damn, Mr. Craven? I'm gonna say Mr. Craven. Could be completely fucking wrong. But it's interesting that they bring up those two names. Is most likely a lifetime's accumulation rather than a chosen selection from a larger collection. Interesting for those two names to show up uh, somehow like that, but hey. Oh, so now it appears in my inventory right here. Interesting. Large collection of painted canvases, many of them framed filled shelving that ran across the back wall of the apartment. This was more than simply a hobby, this was a vacation. I should ask the landlord about this in order to flesh out the victim's background. Broken glass. No? Broken glass is not of interest? Blood dripped from the broken vent. The metal was buckled and torn. What could have done this? Something came in from there or went out. Or the body was dragged in there. Hmm. Nope. Guess I can analyze this. Why not? 
Half artist easel fallen on the floor with scattered brushes and half completed canvas. Uh, I don't think I can take anything from it, but. Mm -hmm. He just moves towards it. All right, let's talk. Should have maybe done the eye first, I know them. Officer, you must be Detective Stano. Very astute. Was it the coat? Also, the fact that they let you in. I'm Officer Dan Braintree. Good to meet you. Uh, I haven't seen a crime scene like this for a long time. You look tired. Where's Detective Luna? In the bedroom. I don't know what she's doing in there. I wouldn't want to stay looking at that. What do you know about the crime scene? The most, I suppose, I was the first responder on scene. According to the landlord, the Vic's name is Serena Shale Shalinor. She's upstairs. I thought it was just a domestic. Anything else you need to know? Just prepare yourself before you go upstairs. It's unbelievable. I'll do my best. No problem. Haven't seen a crime scene like this for a long time. Sure is. Haven't seen anything like it. Just wait until you see upstairs. Worse than this. Eh, I'd prepare myself if I were you. It's not pretty. You look tired. Been up since five in the morning. Couldn't sleep. Maybe you should get a coffee. I will, but not from this kitchen. Ha ha ha. Uh, goodbye, Braintree. Later, Stanhope. Detective Stanhope. All right, sorry, sir. <laughs> what do you know about this? No? Okay, let's go upstairs. Yeah. Beautiful. Good lord. Her name was Serena Kalinor. I've never seen anything like that. Are you sure? What do you mean, Luna? What is this? Look at her, Stanhope. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, am I supposed to see something else specific? I'll look at everything else first. It was an antique vase. Rather, rather plain. But imposing, nonetheless. Perhaps it was a family heirloom. A dresser, heavy wood and well-built. It was a curious, parched landscape. The earth had an odd texture, remarkably opalescent. The brushwork was almost photorealistic. I personally preferred my art a little more abstract, but could see the appeal. Detective Emilia Luna. I'd known her for around 10 years, by which I mean I'd worked with her. I don't think anyone really knew her. We had been partners until the Lascado case. I hadn't seen her since until then. Alright, I'll give it a look at see. The woman, or what was left of her, was tied to the wall. Her jaw was distended, most probably broken. Her skin was a patchwork of blood bruises, ribs pushed through ragged flesh. She appeared to have been hollowed out, with very little besides bone and gristle remaining in the sogging remains of her torso. Have you been here long? About 20 minutes. I was surprised you called me. Honestly, so was I, but I hope you can see why. Just look at the poor woman. But there are other detectives. Isn't Jim Lewis your partner? He's on leave, but even if he wasn't, I think you're a better fit. I don't understand. Do you need my expertise with evidence gathering? Just look at her will. Doesn't this remind you of anything? Lascado prosthetics? There was a twitch in her eye. Between the lid and the orbital floor was a tiny window to the nerves beneath. I see. I need to get my head around this scene before forensics get here. I understand. Can you look for some leads while I'm up here? Anything to get us started? Will do. About this case. Oh, God, there's going to be a lot to talk about. What do we know so far? The victim's name is Serena Kalinor. Hogan is getting some more details from the landlord. He was babbling when I got here. I can see why. Do you have any suspects? Not yet. Hopefully we can find something around here that gives us a lead. You think this is linked with the Tlaskato case? Look at our will. Can you really tell me this isn't the same way the others died? Well, I can certainly see the similarities, but that means nothing without a proper investigation. Similarities. Her body has been emptied. You can't tell me that's a typical modus operandi. Of course not, but look at these ropes. I don't even know what they're made of. 
There were fibers found at Lascado too, but burned up in the fire. They could have been there. It's a stretch. Look, I'm not saying that I'm taking Lascado off the table as a possibility. What are you saying, Well, The Lascado case was horrific. I don't blame you for responding to the emotional charge media for... There was a momentary flare of anger in her eyes before she sighed and took another drag of her cigarette. Well, you're a good man, but you need to learn more about people. <laughs> Amelia. It's been a long time. Two years, give or take. Has there been a previous game I should play before this? Not the way I'd hoped to meet again. You can't pick the hand you're dealt, I guess. Are you looking after yourself? Of course. Of course. I'm gonna double check the creator. Hang on a tick. On their itch.io page, it doesn't show anything different. So, if they did make anything, I don't know about it. What have you found so far? Not much, I'm still taking it all in. Sorry, it's just... Stop saying look at her! You said that like six times now. I can't imagine what she went through. Seriously, she says she repeats herself too much. Like, we get it, yes, we looked at her. She looks gross, and she's hollowed out and everything else. Don't have to tell me to look at it like 50 fucking times. God damn. Um... We should catch up. I can't think about that now. There's too much here. I need to think. I don't mean that I don't want to talk. I understand, Luna, probably more than most. I know you do. Don't think there's anything else really here for me to get. I'm really gonna leave. Uh, let's see. Don't think there's anything more I can do here. I'm gonna return to the cops and see if there's any changes then. Yep. Nervous looking man. The man's eyes were darting around the lobby. He was clearly distressed. Sir. I'm sorry. Hi. Sorry. May I ask you a few questions? I spoke to the other guy, the cop over there. He said I'm not in trouble. Am I in trouble? No, sir, we just need to get a clear picture of what's happened here. What's your name, sir? Carl. Carl Laidlaw. I told the other guy this. Relax, it's just to be, uh, polite. I like to know who I'm talking to. You're the landlord. Uh-huh. And janitor, handyman, you name it. Let's discuss what happened tonight. Can you start by telling me your involvement? I wasn't involved, I just... I just found her. So you called it in. Yeah. What time was this? About 9.30, I think. I don't know the other cops said, uh... I don't know. The other cops had that... So start from the beginning, if you could. You went up to her apartment. Yeah. You had a key. I got keys to all the apartments. It's my building. Serena, I mean. Miss Kalinor doesn't. Didn't have a door as such. What with her having the whole top floor, see? This used to be an old clothes factory, so you need to unlock the button to the top floor. Hmm... Melancholic, calm, sociable. Melancholic. It is usual for you to visit your tenant so late. I don't know. I mean, I hadn't seen her for a few days. I see. Was there anything in particular that made you visit so late? I had stuff to do. A leaky faucet, broken light. Why? I'm just trying to put a picture together. Every detail is important. Please talk to me when, uh, through what happened from when you opened the lift door. I saw the blood. I mean, you've been up there. It's everywhere. I just stood there for a while, scared to move. Then I called out to see if Miss Callender was okay. There was no answer, so I searched the place. I was careful not to touch the blood, of course. When I got to the bedroom, I saw... I saw... Well, I don't fucking know what I saw. You've been up there. What the fuck are those rope things? Who could have ripped her apart like that? Anyway, I ran out of there as fast as I could and called the cops. That's it. The whole story. Let's see if I can answer in any other way. Hmm. So I can re-answer this just out of curiosity. I don't want to be choleric. I don't want to be driven. Let's see if a calm, sociable, sanguine. Why did you decide? Concerned. You don't need to apologize for being concerned for another person's well-being. Did she seem depressed? She was just happy, always smiling, always. 
So take me through what you saw. So she seemed happy before dying. I'd like to ask a few questions about the victim. How long have you known Miss Kalinor? Since January, I think she moved here down south somewhere. Said she wanted a fresh start. She ain't local. And she rented the top floor. She said she wanted somewhere with enough space to get her paintings done. How could you describe her personality? I don't know, buddy. She was quiet, you know, always paid on time, was polite enough. Towards the end, she sort of changed. In what way? Was she depressed? If anything, it was the opposite. She's just smiled all the time. Maybe she was on drugs. She hung around with some shady characters. Like who? People came by, guys. I didn't ask their names. Is she involved with anything dangerous? Maybe. She wore black clothes all the time, listened to loud rock music. <sighs> Ooh, sinful. Wearing black clothes is hardly dangerous. I know that, but you know, these kids today get drunk all the time, get into drugs, and her paintings were weird sometimes, really oily. I don't know how to describe it. Looking at her apartment, she seems to be an artist. She was, and a good one, I suppose. Not just an artist, she helped run a gallery too. Sold her paintings there. I guess she brought some money with her when she came to town. A gallery, do you remember the name of it? Star something, Starlight Gallery, I think. It's over in Neptune. Her and some other girl ran it, but never met her. Clue gained. Location. Starlit Gallery. It's a solid lead. I need to let Luna know. Let's see if I... If the ones I did... Choleric for Driven. Detail-oriented. I'll do Phlegmatic. I see. How was she the last time you saw her? No difference. Out of curiosity, then, what happens if I do Driven? Is he, like, super aggressive? Like, I'm trying to think of things like multiple choice, like in Mass Effect, where you're just like, uh, you, you hit the... You hit the, uh, the response of, sorry, sir, and then suddenly you punch the dude in the face and tell him, shut the fuck up. Sorry for nothing. You know, it's like those kind of memes back in the day of... Dragon Age and Mass Effect, where you pick an option and you're like, oh, that shouldn't be a bad option, and then you end up like pissing someone off and you didn't know why. Um, because there's no renegade and paragon, it's just these four things. Driven. How is how driven? What kind of driven? I find it hard to believe that a young woman would welcome her landlord dropping by unannounced so late. That does sound a little aggressive. I wasn't doing nothing wrong. Do you visit a lot? I helped her move her canvases around, some of them were heavy, and sometimes things needed fixing. Things can break, you know? And you were there if she needed you. I mean, I was there for her. And you liked being around her. Stan Hope! Back off, Hogan. Answer the question, Carl. Jesus, you see, this is aggressive. Well, yeah, I mean, she was a good-looking girl, of course. You, you look fucking old. Hoped something would happen, did you? I don't know, buddy. I mean, the way she dressed. What about it? Girls like that with the little short skirts and their titties out. <laughs> I mean, they're always looking for it, aren't they? Oof. They want people to look, to fantasize. They can't blame a guy for trying it on. And if they refuse? Refuse? Hey, no. I see where you're getting at. No way, buddy. I never made a move on her. Okay, sometimes it peaked when she was bending over, but that ain't no crime. I never killed her. I never hurt no one. God damn. <laughs> so what did... Uh, I saw the... Okay. So only do aggressive... One, so I only pick choleric when I feel like they need to be given bad cop sort of thing, I guess. I want to see if I can end it, though. Uh, if he's going to remember the last one I did, I'm going to do it uh, just melancholic. If it's good, like, it's just a demo, but I mean, I'd rather the last thing... I'd not show, I would not choose Choleric, unless absolutely necessary then, if that's going to be how he responds. And talk to Hogan. Good to see you, Stanhope. I'm just talking uh, some details from the landlord. I'll be done. What? It seems like a bug. Hmm. So... I'm just taking some details from the landlord. No, you're standing out in the opposite of the, of the room, man. Alright, whatever. I, I guess he didn't transition from, hey, I'm talking to the landlord, to, hey, I'm done talking to the landlord and standing where he is, because he's definitely not talking to the landlord anymore. Alright, let's get back to uh, Luna. It's been a long time.
time. I found out where Serena worked, a place called Starlet Galley, or Gallery. I've been there, in Neptune, right? That's what the landlord says. Can you follow that up for me? Consider it done. Alright. List of contacts should be relatively important, but no one's really responding to it. So I'll see if after doing that I can talk to uh, Hogan or not. Otherwise, I mean, I would want to inspect the vents, but I don't think I can. Yeah, it's still detecting him as over here. It, the game thinks he's over here by the landlord. Alright, well. I guess we leave. And we're not talking to Hogan, or it's just not in the game yet. There was more leads to be found. I needed more leads. What? One piece of glass was stained with blood, as though it had been used as a weapon and needed to be sent to the lab. Excellent. That little piece right here. I slept on a glove and carefully bagged the glass for future analysis. I needed to let Luna know. Point and click games like this, god damn, they like to be a little specific. A little piece of glass. That w The more whitish one was one I needed to grab. Oh, also handprint. A bloody handprint, ra rather large. Could be this, uh, could this be the perps? If I had a camera. Let's see, I found a piece of glass that looks like it might have been used in the murder. I'll get it to the doctor. Thanks, Will. Hope it gives us something. Okay, so I found two pieces of evidence. Not sure if there's anything more. Especially since I don't think there's anything else I can really... move my mouse over. I'm gonna hope that that was the two things I needed to find. More leads to be found. I hope the leads aren't going to be by talking to Hogan and it's just fucking broken. Or else it means I have to stop playing the game. Wait for the game to update. I'm going to have to double check to see if anyone else has played it and gotten further. Well, other than that, I don't think I can proceed through the game. I'm going to assume new information will be from Officer Hogan. Unless I miss something in the two rooms. But I highly doubt it. Ugh, and unless I can move over here. And go up the stairs and talk to the other apartment dwellers by going up the stairs? Or through this door? Doesn't seem like it. I'm gonna assume the game is bugged, because again, uh... Hogan is... the game thinks he's right here. Still talking to the landlord. But he's over here, thus we can't talk to him and get any more information. So the game is bugged. There could be more content to the game. I'm not sure if it would proceed to a new scene for us to uh, go through. The game store page, I don't think says anything about it lasting to this point. The game store page shows uh, a strange red desert looking area and a bathroom with a dead body. But that could be from the full game or it could be from the demo simply. And we just can't get there yet because of the bug. There's only two people who thus far have uploaded videos as of the recording. Um, of Wednesday the 30th, almost 10 p.m. And no one's mentioned, hey, we can't get out of the apartment building and Hogan is bugged. And literally no one's mentioned it, even though everyone who has, of the two people who've recorded it, none of them have brought up this blatantly obvious fucking bug, which is kind of fucking weird. Only person they say, super unique and very visually intriguing game, love the conversations, well executed, hope to see the end result, good luck, and then... Cool point and click retro. No one wanted to ask, hey, how come I can't beat the game? How come I can't beat the demo? This is what I... I, I don't mean to be fucking an, an asshole, but... Isn't it kind of important to let the developer know, hey, this gameplay has a fucking bug. Fix it. And instead it's just ass kissing. Like, yeah, the game. the game's good. Good visuals. Interesting facial detail. I like... Uh, like the officer's face. Everyone's faces have this gritty, realistic, but pixelated look to them. I like it. But in terms of development and, you know, being that you can only play a certain amount of the game, and literally these two people played this exact same demo that is broken, none of them fucking questioned it. They just played it, couldn't figure out what they're doing, stopped playing, and said, Great game! 
I'm not disagreeing with it being a great game, but it's just, it kind of, it baffles me. The game clearly has a progression bug where you're supposed to talk to Hogan and probably learn the third piece of information. Hogan has important shit, and you can't talk to Bruce either. Maybe just he doesn't have more to say, or it's just not in the game yet. But Hogan is definitely important, and he's bugged. And no one's brought it up. They just went to complimenting the game and then moving to the next one. I think that's just stupid and lazy uh, of the YouTubers who've played the game and, you know, didn't report it. Because I think it's kind of important to let the developer know, hey, I couldn't proceed to this point of the game. But either way, yeah, it, you can't proceed beyond this point. I'm not blaming the developer. I'm not being an ass to the developer being like, grr, how dare you have a bugged game. But it's just the fact that I look at the videos and no one's brought it up. People are just like, great game, 10 out of 10. And it just usually leads me to, you know, making fun of and set, like sort of being like, why are tiny YouTubers or small YouTubers or medium YouTubers just ass-kissing and not giving the needed fucking information the developers need to have, such as, hey, this needs to get fixed, so then players from when you fix it can actually play what you genuinely intended to upload. Huh? I don't know, because everyone got to this point in the game and stopped playing and then didn't mention that it's bugged. So it, it's just that lack of awareness irritates me. For me, it's just like, yeah, it's definitely bugged. How come no one's told the developer yet? There's clearly a bunch of people who played it and just didn't bring it up. I'm sure give a few more days and it will be brought up by other people who actually have awareness. But again, besides me sounding like a complete asshole, uh, good game. Wish I could complete the demo. It doesn't hinder my perception of the game. It does not make me think less of the game or the developer. Let's get that out of the way there. Um, I, I'm just not necessarily like I grew up on point and click games. Um, like this reminds the style. I can't say it doesn't remind me. I'd ask the developer if they ever played Future Wars or if they ever owned an Amiga computer or Commodore 64. Um, otherwise, no. Possibly we'll look forward to the full game. Not sure. Because not too huge on point to click, but it depends on the demand and how many people enjoyed it on this video, how many views it gets, yada yada yada. You get the uh, the gist. By the way, I hope you enjoyed. Look forward to possibly more in the future of this game and its development, or you can follow it yourself and watch its development and play it yourself when it does get released by going to the link in the description below. You know, the video's description that barely anyone clicks to. If you go there, then you'll be able to look at the Game Store page and follow the developer so you can follow its development and uh, support the developer. But either way, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, become a fluff subscriber, hit the notification down below for updates to my videos. Thank you for watching, and until the next time.